I'm Louis Reyes. I am one of the partners here at ButcherBird Studios, and welcome to ButcherBird Presents. Uh, it's a show that we, uh, we've been doing now for 37 episodes. Is this the 37th? All right. Um, and we talk to people who are doing really interesting content in the digital space. And uh, if you want to, you can like us on Facebook. Please, we encourage you to do that. Uh, see the show live. We usually go Thursdays at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, we also have all of our uh, back catalog of shows archived on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ButcherBird Studios. And today, our, oh, actually, so real quick, I'd like to thank Wowza because it's ClearCaster. It's why we go live in the first place. And now, I'd like to be able to introduce our guest today, uh, Taylor Camels. Hi. How you doing, man? Good, man. Thanks uh, for having me. Taylor is uh, known affectionately in the social media space as Doodad. Yes. Uh, it's a brand you've been developing for a while. It's a yes. way you're doing content. And uh, what I think is so great about what you're doing is that you've found a way to embrace uh, you becoming a father uh, and are creating now content that involves your family. Um, I recently have also uh, had a kid. Congratulations. Uh, Anthea, Anthea, love you. We should go to the park. Uh, yes, we should go to the park. Uh, actually, because our daughters we are the same age. We should be at the park. We should be at the <laughs> we park should do right the now. Show at the park. Yeah. Because our daughters are the same age. Your son yes. is older, but um, our daughters are the same age. Um, and what I found so inspiring about watching your stuff, because as uh, I had a, my kids September 1st, 2017, um, and what I found was that uh, it hit me like a Mack truck. Um, yeah, I, I, bulldozer. I make content for a living, and yet I couldn't find a way to do anything for myself. I yeah. got, um, it was all about either the kid or, or work, and I compartmentalized the two a lot. And so when I saw your work, uh, I was just, oh my God, you are, you are creating content out there that, uh, that uh, allows you to sort of embrace your identity as a father and still be a content creator. Yeah. And now that identity, that do that identity has put you into a pretty successful sphere. So why don't you talk a little bit about that evolution? Sure, yeah, I mean, well, I, I moved out here almost 10 years ago uh, to be an actor. And when uh, from um, South Dakota, yes, from South Dakota, I always think that's an middle of nowhere, <laughs> South Dakota. Uh, it's lovely. Um, but uh, I, you know, I've had some success and stuff. I've uh, been on Jimmy Kimmel Live a number of times and on the middle and a bunch of commercials and different things like that. Um, but when my wife got pregnant, I sort of knew like, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I knew that I didn't know. It was just like I, I, all bets were off, you know, because, you know, there's a certain uh, freedom when you don't have kids that, you know, you can make just enough money to like support yourself and kind of sure. like float by and stuff. But once you have kids, it's like, you got to have stuff figured out. Right, because you, know? you can, you can sort of do stuff for your reel. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I can do yeah, this. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I uh -huh. can spend three weeks doing this because it's going to look great on my reel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had time to, to do that kind of stuff or whatever. And, well, and, and time. The other thing is time. Yeah. Time is the biggest thing. There is no time. Um, but because when so when we had when we were about to have the our first kid Theo, um, I knew that like, okay, like I've been making YouTube videos for a while and like I, I made a, a few good ones and stuff that uh, got a little, uh, you know, they got some views and stuff. But like I didn't have a theme. I it wasn't like all under one so rooftop. You were do, you it were was doing, just, you were just doing like comedy content. sketches and right. everyone, there's a billion people doing comedy sketches, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So it's really hard to sort of like get a following just doing one thing that everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew like, you know, going into fatherhood that it might be a lot more difficult to do all this stuff. So I said, you know what? Like, I'm going to start making videos about what it's like to be a father. I have no idea. At that point, I had no idea. I started two weeks before my son was born. I was like, <laughs> I have no idea what it is. And it's funny to like watch my voice sort of change through the videos too of like the guy that thinks he, you know, thinks this is what fatherhood is to the guy that's like, okay, no, I, I, I get it now. You know? Right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. I, um, cause I, leading up to that point for me, I, uh, not that this is, this is not going to be about me. This is going to be about Taylor, but I'm going to describe. Do you want me to ask you questions? Oh, yeah. or? Could yeah. you just start asking me questions because I need to be validated as a father? Um, the, what I wanted to say was that, that everybody told me your world is going to change. They said, but you didn't understand how. Yeah, you had no I, idea. I was like, I was going. Yeah. Of course, it's going to change. It's going to be this other thing in my life, and and that um, she uh, went into labor, and we were at the hospital, and suddenly I realized it's happening. This yeah. is going on, and after two days. 
we're driving home and I have this kid in the back. I'm like, uh -huh. they let me take Let me this ask home? you this. When, when you held your daughter for the first time, like, what was your initial thought? Like, did you oh, did you have like an instant connection, or were you I, just like, n no? And, and yeah, it's, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that, that's another thing. I think I've, I heard from other fathers going, "Man, when she looks at you, you're just gonna go." What I was thinking was, uh, okay, why isn't there another nurse around here? Like, what you know? I, yeah. I just like was not <laughs> thinking about yeah. the the child as an idea. An identity. It was more of a project. Yeah. Well, like, cause when my son was born, my my our first kid, um, I remember looking at him, and I, I wrote it in this like slam poetry piece I did about the whole thing uh, for my wife for Mother's Day. But I was like, he looks like me that I see, but we have no history, you know? Cause like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. cause like I, I like I'm like, yeah, that's I mean, that's obviously my kid. I can tell. Like he looks like me, but like like I have no idea who you are. Like right, it wasn't yeah, like. Yeah. But, you know, then slowly, like, I mean, very quickly, the, the bond, you know, started as you spend so much time, yeah, yeah. like, it's funny keeping you, him alive. You mentioned the poetry thing, too, because, I, again, I, I wasn't able to really kind of do content or anything else. Mm -hmm. But, like, when she moved to sleep or something, I, and I did have, like, emotion. My emotion was always... A, so many emotions. Yeah, there was all these, like, I'd be sitting at the dining room table, like, be going, oh, oh, emotion's coming. And then uh, I ended up writing poetry for, like, the first time yeah. in, like... 15 years. Well, and I think that's what's really cool about fatherhood, too, is it, like, it opens you up to this part of yourself, or, like, it's it's almost like you're walking into a warehouse and flipping on a light, and, you know, you see all the goosh, 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 all the lights <laughs> right. popping on. Yeah. That's what happens, like, inside your brain, what inside, your, metaphor, inside your heart. Like, all of a sudden, like, you're like, holy crap, yeah. there's so much more to me. And, like, isn't that a, what a fantastic place to start from in making content? Yeah, yeah, and also, I mean, it's funny because you you were a, 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 a funny guy, and you do you do uh, you were doing comedy before this, and so you kind of found a way to kind of bring comedy uh, into it. Um, I know that when I, one thing that I thought uh, was really kind of profound when we had a child is that my wife and I have a good relationship. I mean, we you know good. we have points of friction. Yeah, but we have a good relationship. Yeah, absolutely. When the baby came, those points of friction were sort of amplify because it's not that we didn't mm -hmm. like each other it's that both our lives were changing so rapidly yeah. and so quickly that we were sort of bringing each other to the brink very and quickly. you're learning how to be parents together and you oh each have your own opinions on what that looks like and you have to sort of like work together to to, to meld that but. and and what i noticed in your videos too is that you you also involve your wife and it becomes this way to sort of i feel work through a lot yeah. of these issues you know these kind of new connections yeah. i mean it's funny because I, I i was also thinking to myself now I know what it is when people like have a kid to save a relationship and it doesn't end up working. I'm like, of course it doesn't. Yeah, of course because whatever not. was wrong is going to be completely amplified. Yeah, for sure. There's, I mean, but I, I definitely uh, ag agree in that sense of like, well, in, in terms of the videos go, like uh, there's times when like we're having friction about things and I'm like, oh, this would be fantastic right. content. And I'm like, <laughs> babe, what do you think? Do you want to... Do you want to hash this out and like you know put this out there for the world? And uh, sometimes the answer is yes, and other times it's, it's, absolutely, it's not. absolutely no. <laughs> but but we have that playfulness in our in our relationship and right. that you know sec security in in our marriage that we're like able to do right. that and stuff, and that's really awesome. And I think that's the other thing that comes out in these videos. And I know you guys haven't seen it yet, or maybe you have. Maybe you're a fan of Taylor already, and you have seen all of his stuff, and that's why you're watching. But if you haven't, I would highly recommend going to check out Do Thank That you. after this broadcast because, uh, especially if you're not a parent, it's going to be great because you might be able to get a glimpse into the future uh, or a warning against it. Uh, or you're going to have kids and you're going to respond to this stuff in some wonderful ways. And we're going to watch a few clips later on about this stuff. But I want to talk to you a little bit about what is going on right now because of Do Dad. Sure. You're signed with uh, Full Screen. Uh, yeah, said, Full right? Screen, I, which Full Screen is basically like an uh, management company for mm -hmm. YouTube pages. Um, which is uh, which is pretty cool to, to sort of have yeah. somebody on your side as you're making YouTube videos, yeah, helping you get help. branding partners. And yeah, and and, like and just that. and right. just making sure that your uh, your page is optimized to be sure. running the best it can possibly be running. So that's that's like a full time job already. <laughs> uh, it's so much. There's so much goes into it. It's yeah. like and like I'm usually editing at night when the kids are sleeping, you know, and and the wife is sleeping, and like everyone's out, and I'll get a video done, and they'll be like. 
and I'll get it all uploaded and like, you know, and by then it's like one in the morning and I'm like, oh, captions, I gotta do the captions, <laughs> you know? Cause like putting captions on your videos is just one more way that more people will watch it or it sure, does better yeah, in the yeah. algorithm or whatever. And it's and not that it's hard, but it is just it that just, one It's just, it's another thing, thing. yeah. yeah. And you, you do this to, like, a, this, you're doing this like. And you've already watched it like 40 times as you edit and now it's like, I gotta watch it all again and transcribe <laughs> it. So, uh, um, the other thing, so you you do that, mm, yeah. but, and you're also acting a little bit, but as we, we were discussing I'm before, acting the, as much as I can. You can hire me, just go <laughs> to the night. <laughs> you guys want to hire Taylor? Yeah. Uh, he's very responsible because he's now a father. So, uh, the, uh, But uh, what we, we were talking about is it's getting kind of harder and harder in, it this, is, yeah. in this space to be a working actor. You were talking about the difficulty it is to sort of get commercial auditions, and yeah. then even when you book it, the rates are going down, and, and buyout are becoming more yeah. common rather than residuals and that's becoming less of an option. Yeah, it's I mean it's interesting it's like nowadays just the way the whole industry is going especially with digital now being a part of it like it really does set you up to where like you have to be making your own stuff right. and like getting into it and like you know if uh, there's obviously the traditional way to go about it and that has been successful for some people but I have sort of now starting do dad have found that to be um, more fruitful right. than than sort of the normal, the traditional way. You know, like right. I'm getting different things just off of my own content and things like that. It's opening up doors that way that I don't have to go be, you know, one face in a sea auditioning sure. for one thing. I can be like, here, look at my body of work. Hire me off of that. Because you, you know? even said to me before the show that you like last year you were on a veil for seven commercials. Seven with commercials. One. And you're talking about all the time it takes to go and audition, all the yeah. time it takes to prep for that, all the time it takes to get to and from, yeah. all the time it takes to, to to put yourself in a position to do that. And you're like, well, if I use that time to just make my own content, yeah. I have my own content. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then it, then it's something I have forever. And, and for those of you that don't know, a veil is when you're. Uh, when they basically the production company calls and says, we might book you, stay available for these dates. Right. It might be happening, you're really, really close. And I like this, is, see this is why I think you're a great on-camera presence is because I didn't even think twice about explaining yeah, yeah. that term and you yeah, do. It's, yeah, but, uh, it's, but it's basically the, the essence of like somebody just dangling, right, yeah. you know. It's like, come on, come on, yeah, you yeah. can do it. Ooh, here, here, here it is, here it is, oh, nope, you know. Uh, but then you also did stuff on Jimmy Kimmel, and you, yeah, you were yeah. able to do some comedy stuff. And yeah, I've been on Jimmy Kimmel, I think, uh, 10, 10 times now. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, if you watch any one of them, check out the Brother app. It's my favorite by far. It, I, I was, it was with uh, Anthony Anderson. I got uh -huh. to do a scene with Anthony Anderson. It's super funny, it's basically uh, like, it's like Tinder or Grindr or any of those, but it's called Brother, uh -huh. and it's for white guys to meet black guys. <laughs> Just to like be friends. Guys, check that out. Please. Yeah, it's so much fun. Uh, what I want to uh, kind of move to now is another side of your um, kind of who you are is mm -hmm. you are very handy. You were mentioning you grew up in, yeah. in South Dakota and you. Uh, um, uh, you 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 built stuff. You yep. were uh, a carpenter. Yeah, worked uh, worked construction for about ten years, and actually, I do set construction now for extra extra moolah right. to uh, you know build the sets and stuff. But um, I started a company called Tables, mm -hmm. which the name was not my idea. T A Y yeah. B L E S. Like my name, <laughs> Bulls. Um, but uh, basically, we make coffee tables that, that look like giant cassette tapes. Yeah, and I, first of all, if I, my wife allowed me to do this, I would get one immediately. But I would love to show everybody what these yeah, things look absolutely. like. Yeah, absolutely. Pull them uh, up. Adam, can we uh, see that uh, picture real quick? Yeah, there yeah, it is. There that's is one of our the cassette table. I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's one of our A side models. We've got an A side model, which uh, those are all hardwood, handmade in the U.S. They started about 1700. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing those for like five or six years now. But then just last year, we did a Kickstarter to do like sort of a more consumer model because uh -huh. everyone's like, I love it. I can't afford it. Or like, I've got kids, I can't have this in my house. Right. Like, once you have kids, you can no longer have nice things. It's just, it's not <laughs> a good idea. Um, so we made a consumer model, we launched a Kickstarter, we uh, were, I think, 300% successful on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so now we have a model out there 
right. the B-side model for $300. So definitely, guys, check that out too. Tables, T-A-Y-B-L-E-S dot com, right? Yes. So uh, I want to get back, uh, before we start looking at your videos, I'd like to talk a little bit about this uh, growing up in South Dakota. Sure. We, we met through um, uh, a guy by the name of Aaron Nardi, mm -hmm. who, uh, BMX, uh, hey, BMX Aaron. writer. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, man? And uh, he's since become a filmmaker. We do a lot of work with him. And uh, when, when we did the show, I mean, he told us we should have you on because um, he's fascinating. He did this all, all uh -huh. this dad content. Yeah. Really cool. But you guys met through BMX, yep. right? And you did BMX back in South Dakota. Yeah. So um, South Dakota, very, uh, very desolate. There's a, <laughs> less than a million people in the entire state. I always right. say this because I don't think most people grasp just how like few people there are. Right, and by but area, it's a pretty big state. Yeah, it's a yeah. big state. There's there's 13 million people just in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And we don't even have one 13th of that in the entire state of South Dakota. The largest city is 160,000 people. Right. That's our city, um, which is really cool though. Like I think, I think it, like growing up there was uh, really great because it gave me such a unique perspective um, that most people growing up in the city don't have any idea what right, that's right. like. And it probably fostered that kind of playful energy that yeah, you bring yeah. to all your videos. I um, yeah, but and, and the one thing I always say too is, uh, you know, me and my brother grew up on, on a farm and there was like, there was lots of stuff to do, but you sort of had to like make it yourself. You know, we didn't mm -hmm. have an arcade that you go to and just put a quarter in, you right. know, like we had sticks of wood and tools and, you know, like we're, so we started building our own bike ramps because we got really into, into BMX and, uh, and by the time we graduated, by the time I graduated high school, we had a 40 foot by 40 foot bowl. We basically built our own skate park because the nearest skate park was an hour away. <laughs> right. So we just made our own in my dad's cattle lot. It's still, <laughs> it's still there. It's like falling apart. It has like the, the, my mom's miniature ponies like use it as shelter now. Right, and it's, right. But, <laughs> You know, the fact that you say the line, my mom's miniature ponies. <laughs> yeah, that's, it, it, doesn't everybody's mom have miniature ponies? My mom's got 13 of them, so, yeah. <laughs> well, some people are the cat lady. Yeah, she's my the, mom's she's the, the, the miniature the pony, pony lady. The miniature pony lady. <laughs> uh, well, great. So now, uh, I know people have heard us blab. I hope that, I hope you guys have been entertained at least by this front part of it, but I think that it's really important to get to know you as a person and get to know the setup, get to know your role as a father, get to know your background in South Dakota, because I think all of that lends itself to really appreciating uh, what we're about to see. Um, so you, st uh, at least the, the video that I started with was um, the, you, basically straight sketch comedy. Yeah. I mean, it's basically the same kind of sketch comedy you would see on any sketch comedy show. Uh, but the little twist here is that you yeah. involved your wife. Yeah, so it was, this is she's an not idea. An actor. No, she's not, but she's, she's brilliant in this. <laughs> and like, it's so funny how it all came together because I had this idea for a while and I had, I had this idea for this character that I really wanted to do and then, um, so we decided to shoot this because of events that happened, and you'll you'll soon see why. But uh, it was really interesting that like it became it's my biggest video on YouTube right now. Yeah, it's like and eight million. It, views, it was almost like right? because this was long before Dude Dad. This was like a year before yeah, Dude yeah. Dad happened. But it was this cool like foreshadowing of Dude Dad of right. where. I was headed and I didn't know yet, but. Uh, so uh, before we go to it real quick, I just want to set it up real quick and that is uh, a cop pulls a woman over and mm -hmm. before this point, what we see is um, he's being very aggressive with her. Yeah, and she's basically he's, I'm like, he's accusing her of, uh, of like trying to uh, bribe, seduce him and bribe, bribe him, him and all this stuff. And, and it's been made clear that uh, they're husband and wife. Right, right, but he's not letting it go. Yeah, so. no, he's like, you know, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter if we're, you know, it doesn't matter that we're related. Like, that right. doesn't mean you can break the law. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at that clip right now. Trying to use the power of seduction on me, huh, ma'am? Probably not for a while. Well, it's not going to work. You know why? I am an officer of the law. When I put this badge on, I become asexual. Do not laugh. I am an officer of the law. The only thing I'm attracted to is abstaining the law. Babe, I really just... Do not try to sweet talk me, ma'am. Just because we're related does not give you the right to break the law. I am an officer, officer of the law. Officer of the law. Yes. Okay, so what? What is it? What did you pull me over for? You're in the carpool lane back there. Okay, so? 
Uh, I only count one person's in this motor vehicle. Then you're counting wrong. How's that now? Because I'm pregnant. We're pregnant. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's more after that, and there's more before it. I would highly recommend watching yeah. it. Uh, what I also loved about it, we mentioned your wife, too, is that she's not an actor. She played off you so mm -hmm. well. And sometimes during the sketch, she's even laughing. Yeah. And she's laughing at you as yeah. her husband, but it also works for the scene as yeah. well. No, she, she doesn't like to act, but she's so good because of that reason. Like, right. you put her in something like this where she literally can just just has to react because she's really great at just being natural, mm -hmm. which is which is awesome. And it's funny because like I've like worked with other actors and stuff that I'll bring in to do dad to do different sketches or whatever that you know people that want to do them. Um, not that my wife doesn't want to do them, but it's not necessarily her thing. And a lot of the viewers would be like, "Why'd you recast Heidi? Where's Heidi?" You know, they, like they want to see her, like, because um, they've you know sort of grown attached to her, and because she's just she's good on camera. And I think that's a good advice if you, as a director and a producer, if you really want a great cast, get people who don't want to be in whatever you're casting, and then marry them, and then marry them, because then they are obligated to be in everything you do and support you. Dude, I, there's a formula. And watch here. it. I think she's watching now. Oh, good. Probably. <laughs> she glad. better be. So, because uh, uh, I want to basically get through the, a lot of this content uh, quickly because I'd like people to see them in, in relation to each other. Sure. And so, um, people might see that and go, oh, I see. I, I know what he does. He does a bunch of sketch comedy about parent and stuff like yeah. that. They would be wrong, right? The amount, yeah. of, the breadth of your comedy, the breadth of what you do, uh, not even comedy, uh, is, is enormous, right? Mm. So, this next sketch is, you came up with an idea. And yeah. Then, if it, we want to just set this up. Sure. So, um, you know, this is this is a few years into, or actually about a yeah, a couple years into. How old's your son in this sketch? He's about two in this sketch, okay. and the I like, I mean, the idea, all my ideas now just come from being a dad and living as a dad and being like, oh my god, this is a sketch. This right. is this is good. So I mean, because parenthood is. But when we, hilarious yeah, and exactly. <laughs> but Theo is a runner. He just, right. you take him to a public place, he does not care where you are, he just takes off. And I'm like, man, this kid needs bodyguards, right? And then I was like, <laughs> bingo, I got a sketch. So I, I set this up and uh, I got a, hired a couple of my buddies to, to, play, these, uh, to play these giant bouncer uh, s secret service type guys and just let him, let him go and just follow yeah, him. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're improving this and, and there is real people that enter these things, but they're yeah. also actors. There's a, there's a few plants, but for the most part, it's all just real people naturally reacting to what's happening. Right. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, a, a two-year-old with bodyguards. Where would you like to go today? What do you think? Oh, he's gotten faster. Oh, boy. He's much faster. He's on the move. Sir, don't go too fast. Not too fast. Hard to keep up. He's big on the jumping. Yeah. Jumping day. No photos, please. Excuse me, excuse me, ma'am. No, those are those I'm, are his I'm toys. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 hey. You okay, sir? He looks a little traumatized. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry this car's full. full. This car's full. Sorry. Let's go to number two. Can you step away, please? We're watching this young man. We're we're please security detail. Please, I'm sorry. This is a special circumstance. At least 20 feet, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. No pictures. All right, sir. Ready to go, sir. Oh, are you okay, sir? Oh, I just saved your life. You ready to slide? Uh, did you Have check we... the integrity of the slide? I thought you checked it. I haven't checked it. We should both check it. Okay. One, One two, two, three. So, uh, yeah, 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 it's it's brilliant. You were yeah. telling me uh, during while we were watching that that uh, those guys. W this was the second one you did. Yeah, the yeah. So the first one we did, and like they, they, I mean, the first one was great too, and did really well. And um, but when we were shooting the first one, uh, Shane and Dean, my actors, uh, who are fantastic in this, but they were like so nervous during the first one. Right, I kept right. having to kind of like beg them Come to on, say go for it. to <laughs> say these weird things to people because they were just felt so awkward saying it to these random strangers and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but then they saw the success of the first one, 
And so the second one, it was awesome. They were so much more willing to just like go for it in the second <laughs> Dude, one. Which, just, yeah. I mean, people were getting mad. Yes, yeah, so, I mean some the the worst ones like the well you you watch the video. There's we like we smash someone's phone. We push a guy into the lake. Those are all like. Those are all plants. Like I'm the guy that gets pushed into the lake, you know. <laughs> right. But uh, but the most of it is is real. Well, even when that happens, though, the people watching these things mm -hmm. they don't know it's fake. No, so, yeah. So it's even though there's a plant for the person who gets knocked in, you get a bunch of other people go, "Oh my God, those two thugs just pushed yeah, the person exactly. into the lake." Yeah, exactly. So there's a, I mean, there's a lot of people commenting on the YouTube video that are just <laughs> mad, and it like part of me wants to be like, "Hey, no, it's okay. Like, don't." Don't unsubscribe, but like for every one person that gets mad, there's like 12 that are super excited. Right, you know? so yeah, I, yeah, totally. I like the idea of just sort of leaving them in suspense and leaving, oh, yeah. no, leaving no, it more real for people and let them make their own decisions. Nothing on makes what you it more is. popular than uh, getting people angry. A little so. controversy, yeah. <laughs> so uh, while we were watching that, also, we started getting comments. In, yeah. And one of them was uh, from a fellow South Dakotan. Yeah, uh, Barb Maxwell. She's okay. a she's a, a good friend of mine. We did some church stuff together back in the day. And Barb, by desolate, I I meant awesome. I do not. I'm not harsh on South Dakota at all. I meant that in a in a good way because it's such a contrast from here. And then where the, it's, I, the, here's like dense and like right, overpopulated. Yeah. So like that is. If you if you, you live in this for a while, you might Dakota. appreciate the the desolate a little bit more. Well, I already I already appreciate South Dakota now. Is desolate just, a bad word? Uh, I, th I think it's, it's it's I think it's used in a bad context. Okay, I didn't but. mean it in a bad context. <laughs> Absolutely. But not. but uh but I think that the other comment we got was from your wife. My wife's watching. She's on her pump break. Nice work, babe. <laughs> so uh, so let's get back into this content. So that that video is the second one. You're building these kind of characters. You're building mm -hmm. this universe really of of Dude Dad. Uh, the the bodyguards are recurring characters now, mm -hmm. um, but. In addition to these kind of semi-scripted or scripted things you do, you also do um, things that are more akin to going out to the real world and kind of yeah. social experiments, right? Well, I think that's sort of the way um, a lot of this uh, new media stuff or online content is sort of going. Is it like, well, I mean, you see it with all the reality TV shows that have yeah. popped up. People want to see like real lives and stuff. And um, and and there was a, there's a lot of family vlogs out there, so I, I try to be something a little bit different than that. Like I want to give like a real, raw, authentic look into what fatherhood is, but I also don't want it to just be like me hanging out with my kids all day, you know? Right, like, right. Um, so I try to kind of take it to the next level or whatever, but. Because um, because you were saying that, um, so what's gonna, set us up for this uh, sketch here, this second. Sure, so this was when my wife was pregnant with Juno, our second baby, and uh, um, I've seen a lot of people do the, the labor simulator thing where they put the thing on mm -hmm. their stomach and they feel the pain of labor. Uh, a lot of husbands have done that and I wanted to do that, but so many people have already done it. I'm like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I got to take it to the next level. So I was like, okay, babe, when you first have your labor pains, you're not just going to be laying on a couch waiting for it to happen, like eating ice chips. No, it starts out in everyday life. So I made sure that we were just out living life uh -huh. when it happened. And uh, and this is this is what that looks like. So before we cut to this real quick, I wanted to also mention again the context here. Your wife is involved. She's hilarious in the video, even yeah. though this is not scripted at all. Yeah. And uh, you are out in the real world, and real people start reacting to you guys doing yeah. this little experiment. So uh, let's take a look at this right now. And it's so awkward. It is. Awkward. <laughs> Walk me through it, Heidi. What do you what do you uh, do to not think about the pain when you're doing this? Um, Give me some tips. Honestly, I don't think about anything except for trying to breathe the air out. Ah, no! Like, oh, oh, oh it feels lower now. Oh, oh, oh. it's lower? Yeah, I can oh. feel it on my ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much worse. They got the cart to lean on. That's nice to have. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah. leaning over actually really helps. We gotta move there. Is that the best here. price? Is that the best price? Well, we got 198. What's we got okay. 250, 268. Yeah, see? Ah, they're like tiny little knives. Hold on, they I need a minute. Go in, out. I need a minute. Labor's intense. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, god! It feels really nice in the freezer, though. Hold that. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going through labor pains right now. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> love that. So later on uh, in the video, you, you should definitely go watch it, but a woman comes up, sees what you're doing, and is not, is not pissed, but she's kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like she, you think this is like labor pains? <laughs> yeah, she was so much fun. You got to go watch it to see her because she was so funny. She like, I, I really wanted to like talk to somebody or get somebody's thoughts, and she, um, I think, had said congratulations or something. I'm like, ah. I want to go talk to that lady. So we like just like pulled her aside, and she loved it. She thought it was so funny, and like, right. but she was basically just like ragging on me, being like, "This is nothing. <laughs> that what you feel, you know." And like, she made all these jokes and stuff. She no, was it was great. She was veneration for your wife, and going, "What she is giving you yeah. is a gift beyond the anything gift you could give her." Beyond, <laughs> yes, yeah. I love it. It's great. Uh, so definitely check that out. You're sort of getting a, a good sense of, I think, what Dude yeah. Dad is. It's a nice uh, overview of all this stuff. And we still have a couple of clips to show. Um, but uh, could you talk a little bit about, I mean, I can imagine the reactions across the board. This one is getting even more personal. It's getting more in yeah, the relationship it's, it's, between you and your wife. And that's, you know, that's kind of the, like, the, when I started, I kind of, like, it wasn't just about doing sketches. I have done a lot of sketches, but it's also about sort of, uh, sharing my own experiences as uh, you know, as a new dad, and what it's like, and like, sort of, you know, opening up and uh, being vulnerable, and saying the things that most dads wouldn't say, and giving people like a, an in-depth look um, into fatherhood. Because I feel like, um, you know, with the research I've done and stuff, there's a lot of stuff out there for moms. There's oh, yeah, just yeah, a yeah. ton, right? Because I mean, the older generation that's sort of how it was mom is the primary caretaker and dad sure, goes to work yeah, and blah, totally. blah 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 but um i'm really like excited to be a part of this like sort of new generation where you know it's like dads are being a lot more involved than you know than they used to be in some cases right, yeah, not yeah. not to say that some dads not not to say that all dads weren't but it's definitely like a change that's starting to happen and that there's a lot more stay-at-home dads and things like that um well, I think you're, what you're doing is interesting, too, because not only is it, is it encouraging, and we'll talk more about this later, but encouraging this idea of, of involved fathers and using the digital space as a way to kind of not only create this dialogue with the outside, yeah. but also to sort of bind the family together in a very unique way. I mean, you have this record, in a way, of kind of yeah. what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was the other thing that we thought about, too, when I you know, started. I'm like, even if nobody watches this, yeah. We have it forever and what a what a cool unique gift to be able to like hand off to our kids yeah, someday totally. or our gr grandkids and be like they'll know exactly who, you know, who their great granddad was because they can watch 110 yeah, totally. episodes. Yeah, they, they can watch they can watch kind of what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Guys. And then the other thing I was thinking was um, I remember when uh, Claire was pregnant, my wife mm -hmm. was pregnant and um, she there were other Fathers, usually the husbands of girlfriends of hers, yeah. uh, that you know offer. They say, "Hey, listen, if you never, if you have questions or if you need anything, please reach out." And I never did, and I never uh -huh. did because I'm like, "What? What do I? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I just like I have no idea." And what I thought was so good about what you had created was an entry point, an entry point into that kind of conversation for yeah. fathers like me who are just kind of like, I, I, I don't know, you know? Yeah. I don't know what to ask, how to engage with another person. And again, I'm, I'm, I grew up an American man, so yeah. of course my, my feelings are complicated and are wrapped in a sense of masculinity. And very, probably, yeah, pushed yeah, exactly. down. They're like, <laughs> yeah, what, dude, I don't have feelings. No, what no. are you talking about? Yeah, it's like, ah. yeah, and that's funny. When, when Give I me watched, a beer. When I watch the uh, video that we're gonna watch, uh, we're gonna end uh, everything with, uh, I, I did, I started crying, and I'm like, I have to hold it down. Yeah. Like, I'm like, what? I'm alone, yeah. why, why am I doing this? But, but I wanted to uh, just kind of make that comment that, that it's not only this kind of entertainment, uh -huh. it's not only this way for you to bind your family, but it is kind of this, uh, this catalyst for a larger conversation about yeah. fathers dealing with their feelings, fathers dealing with uh, kind of perceptions of themselves as masculine figures and all that stuff, and I thought that's great. So yeah, I mean, yeah, like sort of changing the way, I mean, sort of changing the way people see dads and the way people see fatherhood, you know, that like I'm, somebody put it to me this once, they're like, you're making fatherhood cool. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, great. that is the best compliment ever, like, yeah. because it is cool. Like, there's nothing that, you know, because like I was saying before, like it's sort of like it's a, a 
a switch that flips and sort of changes you and like uh, being sort of open about that so that other people or other dads can sort of you know be open about that and 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 what it's like and not right. feel like we just have to be this like sure you know M masculine man, force, yeah. you know, the, the the ruler of the universe sort of thing. Um, what a, uh, so I want to go back to that playful energy, if I'm, uh, making fatherhood cool. You do have this like infectious playful energy uh, mm -hmm. that I think is great, and it shows in all your Thank videos. You. Yeah, Thank there you. you go. It's it's a playful energy. I kind of wish I had. I kind of feel like I'm exhausted all the time. <laughs> uh, and now I watch that stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, you know yes. what? I want to have that playful energy. <laughs> but I want to. Um, uh, this next video sort of embodies everything yeah. we've been talking about. Your playful energy, your involvement with your family, that sense of building, mm -hmm. um, you, you build stuff and, and make it work, uh, and on social media, mm -hmm. and this entire video. And the relentless effort. Oh, and the relentless effort, the Relentless yeah. effort, and uh, this is like, yeah, I mean, th I mean, this, th this next video, uh, it's a Rube Goldberg machine, yeah. which, um, I've always wanted to do a Rube Goldberg machine, and then when my uh, wife got pregnant with our second, and we were gonna do a gender reveal, I'm like, I'm doing a Rube Goldberg machine. This is it. Yeah. This is my chance. Yeah. So the, yeah, this, yeah. That's something we're mine. This whole thing. Interesting. <laughs> interesting fact. Um, my wife was out of town when we were building it, which oh, I thought was wow. the best time because it was gonna take up the whole house, and I didn't want to inconvenience her. So and, and she, she can't tell you to stop. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But so like so while doing this, I also was taking care of our toddler. And oh my so God. like the toddler and the cat are running around the house the whole time while we're trying to set this whole thing up. Right, right. Um, but like it, it took three days. Uh -huh. It was it was me and my good buddy Aaron that did most of it. And then I had a couple more friends come in um, at the end to sort of help finish it up and film it. But it. So, yeah. so, so that you guys can truly appreciate what we're talking about here, let's actually cut to this video. <laughs> you were teasing us. You're so close. Get the bottle. There we go. You can do it. All right, powder's going. That's just a snippet. <laughs> yeah, there's another whole two levels of yeah, the yeah. house there, to it, go through. It just keeps going and going. And that was the funny thing about when I watched this video for the first time. You started it, and I'm like, "Oh, that's kind of clever," because I thought it was going to be like five steps uh -huh. or something. But it just keeps going. Yeah, <laughs> many, it really many steps does. To this thing, and this whole thing builds up to uh, you guys revealing the gender of your second baby, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, what was the response to this? Like, I, it just it blew up like yeah. it it was everywhere it was on um headline news and cnn and fox and uh the today show and i mean it was everywhere we got interviewed a couple different places and yeah so it just like it just it just blew up do you have a publicist now or do you are you doing all this on your own no i was just oh <laughs> i'm just doing it on my own and and that, at that point i i only had like uh one other video go viral uh i guess two i guess but not in not in that sense of viral so i when people all these people started calling me i didn't really know what to do now i'd be like okay no i need this much money and this, you know <laughs> like yeah, yeah, but totally. back then i was just like yeah <laughs> well, but, uh, what I also thought was interesting about it is it, it, it gets to another aspect of the digital world that I think is interesting mm -hmm. is as all of our CGI tools and motion graphic tools yeah. become more and more available to more and more people because of plugins and the barrier to entry is going lower, that doing tricks on the video is becoming less impressive. Yeah. And so what's becoming really impressive is when people mechanically 
do things live. Yeah, like well, and that's and I think that's what like there's that's why this thing went viral. We spent three days setting it up. Like, it's a it's a task, you know. Yeah. But yeah, also, totally. there's like zero production value in it, you know. Yeah. Like it's just, <laughs> and that's like people like that real raw feel, which is great for me because I don't have time or money to to make things look polished. So I just you know I make whatever I'm doing. The thing that's impressive, right? You know? Right. It's it's the idea behind it that's the impressive. Yeah, or at least that's what I strive for. It's not always impressive, <laughs> but that time it pulled off. Um, but uh, oh, but one of the th we got, I mean we got tons and tons of comments. We actually made a mean comments video about mm -hmm. it because a mean it was, comments. Yeah, video? yeah. Because people people on YouTube and Facebook they just say these awful things. So me and my yeah, wife yeah. sit down and do a video where we just read the awful comments. Like sure. It's like people would say things like. Too many stairs for little ones. I'm like, what do you want us to do? Too many stairs? Like, t put some elevators in? Or like, <laughs> this is it was ridiculous. But uh, but everyone was always like, uh, you know, seems like a big waste of time. They could have just, you know, cut open a cake. I'm like, you don't get it. Yeah, obviously. You don't. And get also, it. I mean, the thing is, you were involving your kid in the building of yeah, this too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, it's it. Hopefully those memories will stay or hopefully he'll be able to look back in that video and go, well, oh and my God. You know what? It's it's the only gender reveal that we will ever have for our daughter. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like if that's a big moment and that's something that we wanted to do in, in a big way and the fact that it went viral is just a bonus. Like, yeah, yeah. Whether it was going to go viral or not, that's something that I wanted to do. And I, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. I love it. And my wife supported it, so. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, lo I love that there are. What are you going to do? There are mead comments even for that. Like the most innocuous, mm -hmm. wonderful celebration yeah. of life that there is and yet there are still and they're detractors. Just, <laughs> I, th I find it funny though. Like I don't oh, yeah, really care. Absolutely. Like it's, it's whatever. Like people are going to be there's always mean people out there, yeah, totally. but they're just, they're fun because they're so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I wanted to also uh, um, note that, uh, well, I mean, just in general, uh, you doing that too, and it being such a mechanical enterprise and involving your, your son and your friends and like that, again, I'm gonna go back to this idea that it really helps develop a kind of community, that everybody did it together, you yeah. know? And, and I think that's, again, a, a kind of a recurring theme you have in, in Do Dad. Like, like going back to the supermarket thing, you could have just been the center of attention, did this thing, did wacky stuff, and ignored everybody else, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. You started, if people inter engage with you guys, yeah. you would engage with them, and suddenly that became part of the conversation. And uh, that is a recurring theme, I think, throughout this whole thing. Even in uh, the Rube Goldberg video, um, I even hear you talk to Aaron off camera yeah. going, hey, Aaron, are you ready? Yeah, like, yeah. There's this sense of we're all doing this together. Yeah, for sure, and I could not have done it without, without my friends on that one. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so glad that it, that it did do well because I asked a lot of them. Right, right. We were, I mean, we, we, I don't know, I can't tell you how many times we, it didn't work, you know. Oh yeah. I so like, that. so when it finally did, it was a, it was a pretty big deal. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I love that aspect of it of like hearing us talk to each other because like. You know, you can hear that we're like in the zone and like mm -hmm. we're really trying to get this thing to work. And yeah. Yeah, guys, you do, there is this kind of sense that you, of desperation in your voice yeah. <laughs> at the beginning of the video when you guys are starting it. And when, when uh, Theo doesn't hit yeah. the bottle immediately, you're going, go, go ahead, hit it. Yeah. Go ahead, hit it. You know, it takes a while for it to happen. Yeah. It's just, it's part of the charm of the piece. I want to go into, so. There's all of that, a lot of the comedy stuff and a lot of do dead is mm -hmm. there, but there are also these confessional things that you do, and there, yeah. there, there are several of them, but the one we're gonna see a clip of right now is, um, and I totally feel for you because I went through this same process where okay, yeah, this it's, barrage of tests, now it didn't I'm get, sure a lot of people have, but it's just, yeah. It's, well, it didn't get to the point with us as, as far as it got with you, right? Yeah. We, we got the, we're doing these tests, could reveal a bunch yeah. and come in. So it's and then a, it's basically it's a test at 14 weeks of pregnancy. They they make I don't know. You do go in for an appointment and they run some blood tests or whatever. And then when the results come in, they say, when your results come in, if everything's good, we won't we won't you won't hear from us. If there's something that comes up in the results, we'll call you. And, and they we called. got the call, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then but they don't tell you anything on the call. You just 
have to worry until you go to your appointment and then you go to the appointment and you walk in and they're like they like make you wait in the waiting thing and they fill all this stuff and then they bring you into this little room and there's nothing on the table but a box of tissues and you're like why are there tissues what's going on you know like and all these things but and meanwhile again yeah. you, in the video you mentioned this you and your wife were googling all the things oh that yeah could be yeah yeah you're just like terrifying yourself but like i, I want to make videos about things like this because i think it's something that the dads don't often talk about and I want to sort of open up that dialogue and be vulnerable and, and say the things that dads don't normally say um, and you know sort of like so I sort of just kind of put that 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 rawness out there to, to open up and, and, and show what real fatherhood looks like and yeah. what you know the inner pieces look like and what the tough stuff looks like and what the funny stuff looks and just like say and, I'm scared I mean that's yeah the exactly thing. I mean I think and, I think throughout the pregnancy and I think uh, Going into this clip, I'm not I just remember I exactly remember where, where, much where it had, starts, yeah. but like basically, like we find out that um, that the baby might have complications, and we have to go in and do an ultrasound. And like thinking about the types of complications that could be, you start to like. I think this is all in that clip. It's actually. all in. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all in there. So actually. why don't we take a look at the clip before we both start crying? <laughs> so then. The doctor calls us in and we go into the ultrasound room and we sit down and she turns the lights off and I hold Heidi's hand and they turn the machine on and then there's a big screen up on the wall and the minute she starts at the machine there is a crystal clear image of our baby on the screen and all of those thoughts just disappear. Everything disappears and there's just you just don't, you, you just don't see anything but perfection, and you don't care about all the hardships that could come, or any of that. All you see is your kid, your baby, and it's, nothing else matters. So then we sat there for like 10 minutes just getting to watch our baby. And then at the end of the 10 minutes, the doctor turned to us and told us that everything was fine. That there was... <laughs> so, uh, we were just we were talking yeah. while we were watching that thing. Uh, and, I mean, it, it brings up a lot of things. I mean, the yeah. thing of the video... That piece gets me every single time. Just, just every time I th think about that instance. Because it's like that moment was like... Because when you when we first get pregnant it's really just this idea, especially for the dad, because we can't feel it, you know what I mean? We just, we know it, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's yeah. just sort of an idea of, of a child, yeah. right? It's, but, like, seeing the ultrasound and, like, hearing it and stuff is what really, like, turns it into from an idea to a person, yeah, you know? Yeah. To this living thing, you know, that, that you care so much about before you even meet them, it's crazy. And uh, we were talking beforehand about um, other things that come up in the video, and you do talk about, because 14 weeks, I think, is still early enough to end the pregnancy if you need to. Yeah. And those um, thoughts were going through your head as well. Well, we, we, would, never, we would never do that. Yeah. We, like, that's just who me and my wife are. That's, you know, our morals. We, we would never end a pregnancy, but I think what I say in the video before that is, like, thinking about all the complications, like, that we would never do that, but it starts to make you wonder, like, if, if the baby would be better off if they didn't make it, you know? And, that, and it's like, sounds awful, but those are the things that, that, that your, yeah. your brain goes through when you're going through that. And, and that's sort of what led into that, the piece there of like, then going into the ultrasound and, yeah. and seeing it and realizing that like, I don't care yeah. What, you know, <laughs> I don't care what complications there are. We'll figure it out, you yeah, know? Yeah, totally. I, I um, Again, there's a certain level of not humor. That's like not exactly what it. But, but there's there is even a playfulness in that video. You're you're you know you're you're talking to people extremely directly, and you're not trying to mix uh, you turn it into a thing. Uh -huh. But again, because there's this kind of infectious energy to it, you you're able to talk about things that you may not be able to talk about. And I think this gets into that whole idea of fatherhood and making fatherhood look cool and and making it okay to consider these things and think about all these things and know 
that there are other people going through the exact same stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a lot of it is, is the, you know, sort of the community aspect of it. And, and actually, the, funny you say that, because um, after I put this video out, I got a comment from another dad whose kid was like, their their pregnancy was almost the exact same right, time right, as ours. Right. Um, but they had this exact same experience, and they found out the opposite news, that their baby did have complications, and there was going to be like sort of right, this right, long right. road ahead. And that was like a really like really heavy yeah, thing, yeah. knowing that there was this other dad out there mm -hmm. that didn't get so lucky, you know. And, and I often think yeah. about yeah, I often think about because I mean having a kid is so hard that to add on to that, the oh, emotional, yeah. physical, and and. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The, the toll it takes on your yeah. body and also the, the, the amount of time it takes up to then add to that a complication like that. I mean... I can't imagine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Your, your life changes already. So to say that it changes not only in having a kid, but also now your role as a father is to now deal with this complication. And I think that video really did open that up for me too because it's not something I've wanted to think about. It's not something I've wanted mm -hmm. to think about. Oh, what about the guy who did get the news that um, there there is some sort of uh, complication with that with that child? So, so yeah, I re I've really connected with that piece. Well, I'm lot, glad so. it made you think <laughs> and <laughs> thank feel. You, thank you so much, Taylor. Now I'm going to go back into my masculinity mode. And yeah, uh, you, you jump back in your there box. There we go. There you go. <laughs> but um, we're we're uh, we're going to uh, uh, end up soon. Uh, we're going to close this up soon because we're uh, getting uh, near the end. But um, but it's been amazing chatting with you, man, and it's been amazing seeing your content and seeing what you're creating Thank and you. being a dad. Um, I'd love to be able to just kind of sum all this up. I mean, how have you changed? How, what, what's your path in sort of how you approach content um, changed since before you had the baby all the way to now? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, I definitely see I definitely see Do Dad as my future. It's what I want to do. It's what I'm passionate about, and like it allows me to sort of you know tell the stories that I want to tell, which is not something you get to do in the traditional sense of acting where you, you know, you get an audition and you got to go be whatever that is, you know, where I get to be like, I want to tell this story, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, that's really cool and really powerful because it allows me to, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, make my own path. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be really interesting to see how it all goes as my kids get older and they start having their own opinions and, right. and being like, no, Dad, I don't want to be in your video. And I go, okay, That's well. That's good. Because well, right uh, now you're the only creative voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they start or becoming like, creative voices. You know what? I'm thinking maybe I play it like this. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But, you know, that's that's just going to be a part of it. Well, then you can so do all we'll the passive the aggressive stuff like, yeah. oh, yeah, totally. You could choose to play it wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's what I want to be putting out there. <laughs> just passive aggressive fathering. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, wait, so you say you want it to be your future. I mean, you're signing with full screen. You're doing uh, branded content yeah. now because you have an audience. Base. I got a couple of big things coming out over uh, Father's Day that should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about that. Father's Day, yeah, I just yeah. realized now it's probably a huge day for you. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's like our Christmas, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Well, uh, anything else you want to, uh, could you tell everybody where to find all this stuff on social media? Uh, yeah, just search Dude Dad on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, Google, uh, post office, I don't know. Do Dad. That's, that's great that you're able to sort of brand Do Dad, Dude Dad yeah. across I, the board. I, I'm the first thing that pops up. It's, it's actually Do Dad Vlog on uh, Instagram mm -hmm. because I haven't been able to get that account yet. Some butthead opened it up <laughs> like a years ago and then never did anything with it. So there's no way to know who it is or to contact him because you can't message him because he's not using it. and like. Ugh. Right, right. So someone so. has the name Do Dad on Instagram and doesn't use it. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that guy should should contact talk, talk Taylor or contact Butcher Brit Studios and we'll, yeah. we'll offer you something. There was actually, I actually, <laughs> I had to buy the URL from another guy. Oh, really? Yeah, he was he was doing it like a Do Dad thing himself and that's why I was originally Do Dad Vlog because I saw that it was, eh, was kind of taken but I really right. like it so I just did Vlog because uh -huh. that'll make me sort of stand out more or whatever. Um, then eventually Facebook was going to uh, give me the little blue check but they're like, you got to change it to just Do Dad. I was like, Okay, it's worth it. But then I called the guy with the URL, and I sort of told him what was up because I could tell he 
like was really active on it for a while and then like kind of uh fell off and then, yeah, yeah he yeah. you know he got busy or whatever as we do yeah. but i sort of said hey man like what do you think about passing the torch and he was so cool he's such a cool guy oh good and he has and he still has his site up on dudedads.com go check out his merch i i have like he sent me a bunch of his t-shirts and whenever i wear them um like this is one of my shirts right uh -huh. but whenever i wear his shirt Everyone's like, oh, did you get new shirts? Those are awesome. And I'm like, I didn't. These are the other guys. But, <laughs> but that's great. I mean, it's, you know, you're building yeah. the brand together in a way. Yeah, yeah, but he's got, he's got some cool merch. So uh, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Taylor, for being on there. Thanks a lot for sharing all those stories with us. Uh, again, you're watching uh, uh, ButcherBird Studios, um, ButcherBird Presents. <laughs> which is a, a, a show we do about people doing interesting stuff in the digital space. I broke your chair. Did, oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> because this is live, people. We can't uh, edit that out. But um, I wanted to, again, throw out a thank you to uh, Wowza. Again, their Clearcaster is why we can even uh, uh, broadcast live. I can see it. looks great. Yeah, it's right there. It's a big orange box. Um, I'd also like to say that uh, ButcherBird Studios has a very, very exciting live stream coming up Thursday, May 24th at 9 p.m. There's going to be a pre-show before it. Uh, we're working with Reggie Watts. We're doing a live stream fully improv sitcom called Crow's Nest. You might have seen uh, pieces of this in his Netflix special, Spatial. Wow. But uh, it's going to be a cast of uh, Reggie, Rory, uh, uh, Rory Scovel, Kate Berlant. Um, Reggie still threatens to have extra guests come in. So uh, uh, it's going to be really amazing. So that please check like it fun. out. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be on Reggie Watts' YouTube page. So youtube.com slash Reggie Watts is also going to stream through Super Deluxe. And Digital Domain is going to be doing a VR capture of the whole um, uh, night as well. So. We're really excited about it. ButcherBird Studios is doing some amazing things. And uh, this show has really allowed us to have the capabilities to be able to pull off something like that. So uh, definitely watch that. You can also check us out at uh, facebook.com uh, backslash ButcherBird Studios. Doc, ButcherBird Studios. Uh, please check out our, our, um, our website, butcherbirdstudios.com. Check out our YouTube page to see archive uh, ButcherBird Presents if you want to. And uh, again, Taylor, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Do you want to say hi to your wife or anybody else? Hey, babe, I hope your pumping session went well. There we go. Hope, I hope my wife's pumping session went well, too. She probably just uh, <laughs> pumped herself. Guys, thank you so much. Please support us more on social media. Watch Butcher Presents again, and we will see you guys all later. Thanks a lot.